Snus is a moist oral tobacco product with roots dating back to the 18th century. It's considered one of the first novel tobacco products as it took several centuries for other products such as heated tobacco, electronic cigarettes or nicotine pouches to emerge on the market as alternatives to cigarettes. Together with traditional cigarettes, novel tobacco products have found their place in the EU's tobacco directive. But this is not the case for Snus, which has been banned in the EU since 1992. Snus advocates insist that the EU should reconsider its position on the product, which is still used in Sweden and non-EU countries including Switzerland and Norway. The first time Snus was mentioned in Sweden was in 1637, when a customs document stated that Snus was brought into the country from Porvo in Finland. Snus has been widespread in Sweden since the 18th century, and its use became a must among the fashionable men and women of the aristocracy. Manufacturers began to produce local varieties of moist snus, and when more than one million Swedes emigrated across the Atlantic between 1846 and 1930, they carried their Swedish traditions with them, including the tradition of using snus. Using snus was so common that the main streets of the Swedish-American districts were referred to as snus boulevards by Americans. Snus had become an identity mark for Swedes. Its popularity dropped during the 1920s and 30s, but then began to grow. But it fell again between the 1950s and 60s as the popularity of cigarettes increased, but it resumed in the second half of the century, along with growing awareness of the health risks of cigarettes. This is also why, when Sweden entered the European Union in 1995, it managed to obtain a particular exemption, the permission to continue selling and using snus, which continues to be banned in the rest of the EU. Although much older than cigarettes, in countries where it's available, snus is an alternative for smokers who want to stop smoking, but don't want to quit nicotine. Uh, the ban was uh, in, put in place in 1992 before Sweden joined the European Union, and nobody cared. So uh, that why, is why it was banned uh, from the beginning. Now it's been banned for 30 years, and it's a, it's a shame, I think. But it's also interesting, because we've got a live experiment. What happens when a country has snus, and when countries doesn't? Uh, so we were able to compare uh, not only the use of snus in Sweden, but also the prevalence of smoking compared to other European countries. And it turns out, after three decades, Sweden is the European champions here. The European Commission recently told your active, there is an ongoing assessment of the Tobacco Products Directive and the future of snus in the EU will be based on this evaluation. Uh, Sweden uh, or some Swedish companies export snus to quite a lot of countries. Uh, one of the biggest markets right now is the US, which is also pretty fast growing. Uh, Norway is a country which has uh, a lot of import of Swedish snus and it's quite common to use it there. And we can see in the statistics that smoking amongst young people has decreased a lot and instead they use snus. According to Anders Milton, Sweden has the lowest incidence of lung cancer compared to other EU countries, and this is thanks to snus. Because we have the lowest incidence of lung cancer within the European Union. We are lower than the average of the European Union. If the Euro members of the, of the men in the European Union would be using snus and, and cigarettes like in Sweden, I mean, if, if you go back a number of years, 30, 40 years, there are 350,000 fewer deaths per year of men in the European Union. I mean, it's, it's a huge issue. It's a huge issue and it is, it's, there are so many facts that speak for snus because you don't get cancer. Contacted by your active Swedish MEP Sara Skytedal commented, if Europe wants to fight cancer and tobacco-related mortality, the single most important issue is to enable less harmful nicotine products to take market share from traditional cigarettes. This means that the EU should not overregulate, much less ban, products such as e-cigarettes, nicotine pouches or Swedish snus. When it comes to smoking, we, I think now we're down to 5% smokers uh, compared to uh, other countries in European countries which have uh, prevalence of about 20% I think. 
Uh, so, so there's a huge difference between Sweden and the rest of the European Union. I would say there's one clear reason, uh, and that's snus, uh, nicotine pouches, uh, tobacco pouches. Uh, the, uh, and uh, so if you look at the consumption of tobacco in Sweden, it's the same as in the rest of the European Union. But smoking is really, really uncommon. Yeah, yes, of, of course, snus, we have ad people that are addicted to snus because nicotine is obviously a dependent drug. Uh, but uh, the thing is, it's it's the same as uh, when it comes to to other drugs that if you can change a drug that is really harmful to you to something that is not harmful to you in the same way, then we achieve uh, that's that's harm reduction. That's what we try to achieve. Uh, obviously, the best thing would be if you don't use use snus and you don't smoke. But uh, the second best is is uh, you, you don't get the harm, harmful effects from, from smoking and, and you don't get that with snus. Maybe you, you, there are some studies showing you raise your blood pressure somewhat. You should not use, use snus when you're pregnant or if you had a stroke before, but otherwise we don't see, uh, we don't see any really harmful effects. So, so it does not, it does not uh, shorten your life in the way that uh, smoking tobacco really does. Your gums can become uh, a little sore of using snus a lot. It also depends on what kind of snus you are using and how it affects the gums. But that's a uh, pretty common complaint that people have. Uh, however, there are now um, a specific kind of snus which do not hurt the gums as well. So the few bad health effects that do actually come with the use of snus are uh, simply going away one after one. Italian MEP Alessandro Moretti opposed snus telling you active last year. There are studies showing that snus is related to other diseases. Snus probably doesn't cause lung cancer, but is related to many other diseases such as cardiovascular diseases and other cancers of the digestive system. To decrease the number of smokers, we must not condemn them to another addiction. There are two possible explanations uh, as far as I can see. One is it's very difficult to admit that you've been wrong for a long time. And, and the second is a little bit more serious and it's, it's about you, they don't want another source of nicotine because nicotine is an addictive substance so if you can uh, get rid of, of all other options to consume nicotine they think the, the society will, will profit from that well yeah i think they will they would change i think the same as the world health organization will change because the world health organization has come to the conclusion that cigarettes have to be allowed and only cigarettes anything that helps you quit smoking would be forbidden and i think that's wrong i think they are they are you know going the wrong way help people get rid of the smoking instead in the same way as we have harm reduction when it comes to to, to drugs when it comes to alcohol you know in sweden for example you know the taxes on alcohol are lower on beer, a little higher on wine, but very high on, on hard liquor. You know, it's, it's harm reduction. And, and we are asking for the same thing in tobacco regulation. In addition to smoking, the World Health Organization rejects all tobacco alternatives, including snus, as harmful for public health. Yet the World Health Organization insists there is an irreconcilable conflict between the tobacco industry and public health policy interests.